So good afternoon chemistry students. We are about to embark upon the chapter regarding the mole. And the reason why we need to embark upon this is because the mole is a way that we count particles in chemistry. It's a way to count by weighing. And just as we use dozens when we order donuts, the unit of measurement in the System International or metric system unit is called the mole for the amount of matter in a substance. And that abbreviation, MOL, comes from the original Latin word, which means a small pile of stuff. Now, what is the stuff that we're going to count? We're going to count particles, and those particles could include typically atoms or molecules. The word formula unit is probably an unfamiliar term to most of you because it's basically like a molecule, but it's the unit of structure that we use for ionic compounds. More on that later. You could even count moles of ions, which are charged particles that have gained or lost electrons. Now they're really, really small. You know even if you had Superman's vision and Superman's super teeny tiny tweezers, you couldn't actually pick up an atom. You couldn't count them. And if you've seen the video on the mole, you know that it would take forever to count how many things are in a mole. They're too small. It's going to take too long. So what we've created is this counting unit that's called the mole. And it's based upon work done with gases uh, a couple hundred years ago in a chapter that we'll study again in a few weeks. Scientists like Amadeo Avogadro recognize that when you look at gases, which have particles that are very far apart from each other and don't interact with each other, you can look at identical volumes of two different gases and be able to conduct experiments that prove that even though they're different gases, as long as the temperature and the pressure and the size of the container are all the same, each of those containers contains the same number of particles. From that, scientists were able to eventually understand the relative mass of atoms, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's go ahead and talk about the mole. Trust us, though, on those concepts. They'll be coming later. So we're going to take a little look at a video about the mole. It's the commonly abbreviated as MOL. As I mentioned, it's the metric system unit that's used to measure the amount of a substance. Officially defined, it's the number of particles, representative particles, such as in carbon, the number of atoms that would be found in exactly 12 grams of pure carbon-12. So let's pick up this little video here that isn't playing automatically. And we're going to have the nice narrator man talk to us about a mole. A mole, by definition, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. One mole of each element has a different volume and mass. Rounded to the nearest tenth of a gram, sulfur has a mass of 32.1 grams per mole. Aluminum has 27.0 grams per mole. Carbon has 12.0 grams per mole. Magnesium has 24.3 grams per mole. Iron has 55.8 grams per mole, lead has 207.2 grams per mole, zinc has 65.4 grams per mole. Well, that was pretty exciting. we got to get that guy to work on his voice a little bit. So back to our PowerPoint. This mole, this unit of counting measurement, is going to be used to calculate either numbers of particles or if you know your numbers of particles, calculate numbers of moles. And more importantly, we'll be using an interchange converting back and forth from moles into grams and grams into moles. So what we're learning forms the basis of some of the heaviest duty math that you're going to see in the second semester on stoichiometry. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this mole. So somebody down the line established that there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things in a mole. You could have a mole of anything, but the representative particles that we're referring to are molecules, atoms, ions, and also those formula units. Avogadro's number is the other name that we give to this number because Amadeo Avogadro was the one who determined the volume of one mole of a gas in those early experiments that I mentioned before. We're going to round off that number to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Some textbooks use 6.021. If you write it out, it looks like that. Now you understand why we use exponential or scientific notation.
too many zeros to deal with. Let's take a look at what these particles are that we're counting. Those particles could be, for example, molecules. And as you can see, a molecule is the unit of structure for compounds like water. Molecules are standalone little units. There's my H's, the little two blue guys, and the big O in the middle. That's our oxygen in the formula H2O. A compound is a substance, a pure substance, that's been formed by the com uh, combination of two or more elements in a chemical change. So I could count molecules of substances. If you have a pure element, such as copper, you can see that copper is only made of single atoms of copper. So in counting uh, atoms in an element, a monatomic or single atomed element, we're going to be counting atoms. If you did the chalk lab already, or if you'll do it tomorrow, the formula unit is the basic unit of structure for ionic compounds such as salt. And what makes this different is that if you could take the salt and use your superhuman vision and look inside, you'd see a regularly repeating pattern of big chlorine atoms or ions attached to small greenish sodium ions. But notice that they're in this crystalline lattice, and they're attracted to each other because of opposite charges, but again, more on that later. So formula units are the counting unit that we use for ionic substances. Now, let's say you wanted to figure out how many particles of sucrose are in 3.5 moles of sucrose. Well, sucrose is a compound. We're going to be counting molecules, and we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in a mole. So the only kind of conversion factor you get to use when using Amadeo Avogadro's number is either 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over 1, or it's inverse. And this is where we go back to using dimensional analysis that we learned uh, in the last chapter. So in this particular case, if you're given numbers of moles, we want to switch it into particles. The Avogadro's number will go on the numerator. So let's say I had 3.5 dozen roses. I would find out how many roses I had by multiplying by 12 things in a dozen. So for sucrose, the representative particle, as I mentioned, is a molecule. And I'm simply going to multiply the 3.5 moles of sugar, sucrose, by the Avogadro's number. Here is the correct setup. Notice that we must have set it up correctly because the moles of sucrose cancel and we're left with molecules of sucrose. So this time it was 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over 1. Please don't forget the times 10 to the power. It's a very important part of your answer. Now suppose we want to find out moles and somebody gave us particles. We use the inverse of that conversion factor. This time we'll take the number of particles as our given amount, and this time the word mole will be on top and Avogadro's number will be on the bottom. It's easiest if you write the units in first, then put the numbers in, because that way you'll know for sure that the correct units will cancel and you'll get the right answer. So for example, we have zinc, which we use as a corrosion-resistant coating on iron and steel. For example, you could coat them, uh, coat like, uh, nails with zinc. And it's also an important trace element in your diet. If Ms. Hackward or Mr. Ruby or I give you a problem that says convert atoms into moles, now you start with what you know. 4.50 times 10 to the 24 atoms starts the problem. And this time the conversion factor, I taught my classes, this is where you compulsively write the times in the bar, this time the conversion factor shows the word moles on top, and the word atoms on the denominator. I prefer, as I mentioned, to write the unit in first, then put the numbers in. So if you ever can confuse, then you just talk to yourself and say, oh yeah, they want moles, moles goes on top. The number that always goes with the word mole in these problems is one. And the numbers of particles is where you put the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Looks like atoms cancel. I simply complete the division, and I'll find out that in that many atoms of zinc, there's 7.48 moles of zinc. 
that's a good stopping point. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.